Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to dress up this little fire pit here. They just have a concrete ring and you can see like some pea stone and river stone. I actually did all this and this is just laying in the yard so I put it here. But I'm like, hey, let's uh, go ahead and dress this up. So I went up to Lowe's and we got some block. We're just gonna go around the edge and then put toppers on the top and it's gonna to totally transform this plain concrete ring into a really nice fireplace for outside and it should only take a few hours to do. So let's get started. A couple of the tools, obviously a tape measure and pencil, just so you can mark off everything here. And then you don't even really need a saw because I'm gonna show you how to you know, figure out how many blocks you need. And if you do correctly, even if you leave a little bit of space on each one, you're not gonna need a saw to cut it because it'll perfectly line up around the concrete ring. And then we have toppers on here. So once we have the block the whole way up, we just have a topper on here so you can just use that is you know whatever you want to use it for it's more decorative than anything and also we have concrete sand which is a little bit more coarse we're going to use that for our base that way it has something stable uh, to pack down on uh, i know they sell like the paver base and all that at the store but it's so expensive it's like five dollars a bag and you end up needing like you know 10 bags of it i got that sand for uh, 40 dollars for a ton and a half so it's a little bit more coarse so kind of regular sand is so fine it just your blocks will just slide off but the concrete sand which is a lot more coarse will just hold in place and it's not like we're using a lot either it's just basically to make sure it's level so let's get started i'll show you the process okay so right now like i said i have some pavers here the easiest way to do this honestly go up to the store and get like two pavers and we just take one in place and just put it right against here and then we take a pencil and mark off where we started from it doesn't have to be perfect and we just keep going around the whole way so i just set one next to there obviously yeah you want to get as tight as you can some of that rock that was there and it's just to give us a general idea of how many. Keep going around the whole way, and I measured 15 around this. So 15 blocks. Now we have to figure out how high. So I know each block is 4 inches. Get the tape measure out here. A little bit tricky trying to film by yourself with this. So right now, we have each block at 4 inches. So we're just going to measure the highest point on here. And we're at like 16 and a half. So we know we need four rows of blocks. So 15 times four, we need 60 total blocks. And then same scenario. Let me show you what kind of sand we have here. It's a coarse sand. And then here's gonna be the toppers on here. Now I actually measured those differently. Since they're gonna go around, I just measured from the top, it's 12 inches. And again, I just made a point on here, got my pencil, just made a mark, and I just went around here and measured like every 12 inches and kept going around to get a rough estimate on how many toppers I would need. So that's basically it. It's not rocket science. You can do this yourself. It's very easy to do. First thing we're gonna do is move out this river rock near the edge, and we're gonna put our concrete sand in. So I'm gonna do that right now.
Easiest way to do this, just grab a bucket and start filling it with rock. And then we'll start, we'll start filling in with sand. It doesn't have to be perfect, you're just trying to get all the big rocks out of here. And I, I do have weed guard underneath here, that way you don't have, even though the heat's going to kill everything, that way you don't have to worry about weeds in the future. Especially if you don't use it for a while. I'm just going to continue around here. I don't want to bore you with this part of the video. I'm going to get completely around here, then I'll show you when I start the sand. Okay, just showing the step by step. So I moved all the rock back, and you can see I drew a line. I measured, since it was 16, I measured 15 and a half inches from the top down. That'll give me a little bit of room once I add all that weight on the sand if it compacts just a little bit more. And I just went around the whole way. Just drew some reference lines, just so I could see. Back here it actually gets level, so I only need a little bit of sand there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shoveling in the sand now. And I'm just going to continue the whole way around and then of course smooth that out, make sure I'm level. I'm going to go the whole way around and then we'll start setting some blocks here. Okay, I'm just about done with my first row. All you're basically doing, and you can use a rubber mallet if you feel like you're not getting good position. All these are nice and level now. When you put them in, I recommend putting, if you have imperfections on your blocks, put them on the bottom, because as you put these rocks back, you're not gonna see that. You can see this one's a little bit high compared to the other one. All you do is go like this until it's level with the other one. So you just had to move that a few times and then you're good. Now, one other thing, I try to make them go inwards since I have something supporting it. If they were outwards, eventually, the ground could settle and they fall back. So if you have just a very slight tilt, it'll uh, just rest against that then. One other thing I didn't mention, a lot of times I'll drill holes if I'm using this against concrete. It allows oxygen and airflow so you have a good burning fire. So let me go, go ahead and finish this row right here. And then we're gonna start on our second course. Everything's nice and level. And you can also, when you're done, just measure from the top block up to here just to make sure you're perfect the whole way around. But if you measured and followed your line in the first course, you should be fine already, but never hurts to double check yourself. All right, first course is all done. Now I wanted to let you know too, 
when I initially measured, I needed a little bit more space. So all I had to do is move the block just a little bit away from the concrete and it allowed me to fit everything in perfectly. So if you just pull the brick away from the wall just a little bit, then you don't have to make any cuts and it's still gonna be just as structurally strong. So on to the next rows and I'll show you once I get to the top. One thing I should mention also, just in case you're new to this, you want to stagger all your blocks. Say you have a joint here, you want to make sure your block, your next row falls right here. That way it'll uh, make it structurally sound and even the weight out too. Because if you did all your lines up here, it would sag right down that middle there. So let me go ahead and finish this up and we'll uh, try to fast forward this so you can see everything involved. Okay, all done, ready for my topper. Only problem is I'm one block short. So again, it's always good to have extra block. Um, just need one more. And as you can see, even though I had a uh, half inch of extra space, you can see I'm just a hair above with the concrete ring. But when I put these toppers on, it's not even, not even gonna matter. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll put a few of those on so you can see how it's gonna look. And again, you're just trying to stagger everything. That way none of the lines line up. The weight will be evenly distributed. So right there is the middle. I just spaced it in between. Just looking at this now, I think I'm actually gonna buy different toppers or just cut them. Uh, there's too big of a gap in between here. I'll show you real quick. You can see how big of a gap that is there. So I want it to look a little bit nicer on that. So let me run to the store and then uh, I'll see if I can find something that looks a little bit better. So I'll be back soon. All right, so I decided on keeping the block. I was originally going to either cut it or just try to find another one, but once I put it on top, it actually looked kind of cool like that. So I'm gonna leave it as is. So I just finished up. As you saw, the longest part is gonna be your bottom, 
your bottom row. You just want to make sure it's perfectly level and all your spacing is tight. And then the rest of the blocks go together really easy. And like I said, if you just lean it in a little bit, you don't have to worry about ever falling over. And if you're concerned about like these top blocks here, like these here, they're pretty heavy, but you can always get some like, uh, they make a liquid nails. I think it's called like fuse it for outdoors. You can put that just so if somebody goes to lean on there, you know, it's not gonna tip over on them and hurt themselves, you know, fall on their foot or anything. But yeah, just stagger that and it turned out good. So we're in the fall season here right now. It's, it was like 50 degrees, maybe 45 last night. So a perfect time for a fire in the outdoors. Hey, just want to say thanks again for watching one of my videos. Please hit subscribe if you haven't done so and hit the bell notification. You're going to see all kinds of videos like this coming out. You got your DIY projects like this. Seriously, it took me about an hour and a half. Um, I've done these before and maybe if you're unfamiliar, it might take you two hours. But you can have a beautiful fire pit in the backyard like this. And you don't even have to have that concrete ring. You could just do it in block, uh, same layout. And then I just finished it off with that river stone or pea stone. You know, whatever you ch uh, choose, it's your choice. So lots of videos coming soon, tools, houses, little projects like this, and uh, lots more to come. About to go start another one right now. Have a great weekend.